Yeah man, my name is Lydie Cox and I want big up Dan Sinclair and Rudy Cooley writing on the bricks and at the black archive places, you know? So, that's the part I love. Welcome, welcome, welcome YouTubers to another edition of Dan Sinclair Quick Fire Interview, see? So I just want you to big up yourself Dan Sinclair and big up yourself on Rudy Cooley I'll be your host for today, Shawnee T. Now people don't forget to subscribe and like. You don't know, share the videos when you see it, yeah? Alright people, so who we have here? Who we have here? One of the greatest, one of, I, you know you can't use that, the, that word greatest around so much people. But you see this man here? You can definitely use the word greatest. Let me introduce you the word to Salide Coxon, one of the greatest sound man that ever lived. Yeah man, I want to say big up to all of the YouTube prescribed listeners, big up to Dan Sinclair and the Quick Fire team, you know? My name is Lydie Coxon, owner of Sir Coxon Outta National Sound. And I want to greet all of you in that divine name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Celestia the first, kings of kings, Lords of Lords, conquering line of the tribe of Judah. So, Ja, ready, YouTube for that. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, so light, come back on your sir, you know, because you are really, really royalty, you know, brother. Yeah. And that's a fact, you know what I mean, B? So, we're going to have a little conversation here, yeah? And we're not going to just fire, fire interview, we're just all that little yeah. reason, you know what I mean, my brother? Okay. So, First thing I'm just going to bring in your direction, like your favourite selector, who's been your favourite selector? Well, my favourite selector would be always Festus and Black and Dread, uh, two of the greatest selector who will select and Sir Cox and Sound, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. I remember growing up listening to Cox and Sound, you know what I mean, there was, there was a different there's a different vibe to when you come around Cox and Sound. Yeah. Cox was like Cox and Sound was like a university, you know, <laughs> for youngsters who come off the road, who have been interested in sound system and music thing. Yeah, they come to Cox and, and they learn their trade. Yeah, and then they move off out you know, the country and do their things. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So we were like a university, you know. Definitely. Sound with discipline, lot of discipline, and, mm. you know. A strictly roots and culture song, okay, yeah. roots and culture music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what year, what, what year did you start Coxon? Well, listen, Coxon started 1969, but before Coxon, wow. I played on a song named um, in Balam, right? I played on two different songs in Balam. Okay, we sound Before I that? come to Coxon. We sound with that. I play on Queen of the West from Balam. That's the first song that I have the opportunity to wow. play on. And after I leave Queen of the West, we play on Barry Skyrocket, Balam too. Mm -hmm. And then um, I leave Barry Skyrocket and go and build my own song, Lights the Matador. Okay. And after Light the Matador song mashup, I go and play two Creed sound. So I come to four sound. Mm -hmm. The reason why I, I why I come at Cox now yeah. is when I was playing Joe Creed sound and I'm getting a job with some white man who tried to um, grab me up as a selector. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't know that there was some policeman, right? See? So when they return, yeah. they arrest me and the policeman them plant me with a big machete and See? plant me at the two friends. And um Mr. Reed, who won Duke so I'm supposed to come and give evidence to me mm -hmm. in court to say that I didn't have any weapon because I, I, I didn't carry a weapon or nothing the worst time. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Reed didn't come to give evidence to me two times, and the third time the judge decided that he was going to um, try the case. So the judge said, Any man who can afford to have a weapon like this in a public place can afford to go to prison. Wow. So they gave me six months a knife that the policeman plant me with. Wow. So while I'm doing that six months, I say, well, I wouldn't come out of prison mm -hmm. and go and play that man's sound, Joe Creed sound anymore. Yeah. I said, in Jamaica, you have two big songs, one named Sir Cox and one named Joe Creed. 
I'm going to come out and build my son and call it Sir Cox and lick off Joe Cree then. Hey, you lick off him, man? I did do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, when it comes to dance, right? Yeah. Yes, all right, let's, let's put it this way. Let's call it two types of dance. Yeah. You'll get like a sound clash or you just get a regular dance where you, yeah. where you play with with, with an exile. What yeah. will you prefer? Regular dance or sound clash or play by yourself? Either? I like playing against the other songs. Okay. Sound clash is a very nice thing, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yes, father. Mm. I play some of the best sound clash dance with Jash Shaka. Yes. Um, Saxon. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Fat Man. Mm -hmm. King Tobis. Yeah. Mombasa. Lord Jeez. David, you know? It's Mombasa, yeah. yeah. We play sound clash with all of these songs. Beautiful. Yeah. What sound clash do? It bring out a lot of people, and then when you are playing with the next song, he's going to play his best, and you play your best, mm -hmm. and then you know the thing is so nice, you know, not like what's happening today. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I love sound clash. Still love playing by myself too, but I love to stream up with other song. Yeah. Because that's the only way you're going to know if you have a good sound. Definitely. Is to play against other sound, you know. But yeah. within unity, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Not within a bad man thing. Mm, or, mm, bad you know, bad just bad. music, you yeah. know. Make your music speak for you. So what's that's what I mean. Sorry. So what's what's one of your most memorable dance? Yeah, yeah. Like I know Coxon has been playing forever. I remember posters. I got bigger brothers and sisters. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. I remember Coxon used to play with small acts and no sound at Acton Town Hall and all these places. You understand? So, what's, what's, I know you have many, well, many I have dances. many memorable dance, you know? Okay. Playing with Josh Shaka, we have some of the most memorable dance playing with Josh Shaka and yeah. Batman. Yeah, yeah. We play with sax, and sax is a great sound. Yeah, We yeah. play, you know? Yeah. We enjoy that because when you play with these sound, you have to play good because they are great sound yeah, also. Definitely. You understand? Yeah. But one of the memorable dance that I remember most is the dance that we play in Birmingham. And we need the last real life in Birmingham. See. Big riot at Digbe Town Hall. So okay. that must stick in my mind more than the rest of the thing mm -hmm. because a lot of people get hurt yeah. in that dance. You understand? Wow. So I kind of remember that more, you know? I, I, but today that is water under the bridge. Because oh, okay. I've been back to Birmingham several times. <laughs> okay. and, um, London and Birmingham mm -hmm. host the most sound system. Definitely. So if you really want a challenge out of London, it will be sound from Birmingham. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah. And you have so much good sound in Birmingham, like mm -hmm. Duke Sonny, Lord Neville, okay. Lord Cali, See. King Halai, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sir Christopher, wow. Wasifa, yes, Jungle man. man. I could, I could, I could keep going to <laughs> Quaker City. Yeah. You know, Ooh, Quaker, man. Yeah, man, Quaker City that, was man. one of the big sound that really stopped sound from coming into Birmingham and mashing up See. people. Yeah. Quaker City was really heavy. Okay. It was musical like we, but it was really heavy, you know. Yeah. So we play against the best set of sound from Birmingham. Mm. And we play against sound in Manchester, like Cass. Okay. Yeah, we play sound, a sound from Bristol, Tarzan. Okay. We play with sound from Coventry, Black Crusader. Mm -hmm. So Coxon play with all the sound around. Okay. The different with Coxon sound in 1960, 70, 69 coming down. Right? Because Coxon sound was launched in 1969. But the different with Coxon sound from all the other sound in London. All the other sound in London, they were only good in their community. They were only moving from Brixton to Peckham to mm. New Cross. When I come with Coxon, I move to Bristol, Birmingham, See. Manchester. See. And by the time the sound man in London realized what happened, Coxon almost play up the whole of the Midlands See. and come back to London. And then it also showed the sound men them in London that yeah they could travel out of yeah. London and go to these places. You okay. know what I mean? But it was fun, you know? Yeah, definitely. It was fun. I enjoy every day of it. So you see, talking about traveling, where, where's the furthest coxswain has been to play, which country-wise? Well, we've been most of the country. We've been to America, well, New yeah. York. When you go to America? Yeah, we, we've been to New York. We play um, Downbeat and see. Kilimanjaro in New York. See. We've been to Italy. We've been to Ireland. Yeah. We are the first song 
to go to France from England, mm -hmm. first son to go to Holland, mm -hmm. first son to go to Belgium, Coxon okay. Sound. Okay. Yeah, out of London. When we go to those places, there was no sound system there. And if you go to those places today, there's a lot of big sound that build up in the continent. So, so when, you, when, you, when you travel like into, into Europe and that, you bring cuts and sounds? Yeah, no, when we travel to Europe, the sound is in a van and we take the ferry <laughs> and get over there and get where we were going. You understand? Yeah. So we travel with the whole equipment. Yeah. yeah. As, you know, wow. beautiful. Yeah. Uh, when we go to those places, we meet such nice people as well, you know? Yeah. Definitely. And, thing, and Definitely. we never really have any hacklings with people and mm -hmm. things because we always keep with discipline and you know, mm -hmm. only that when we string up with you, you know that we're not taking any passenger. All right. It's a strictly music. So you, you, you well, just keep regular dance or you clash on uh, in Europe? In Europe, we, in we clash with, we, we, we keep dance in Europe, we play in Europe. Mm -hmm. There was much sound to play with. The first place we play with that sound was in um, France, okay. a place called the Pali. We string up and we just said that they have a slicker sound in there, in France. They say Cox must play one hour. Okay. And then the French sound will play one hour. Yeah. Well, we play our first hour from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. And when the French sound come on to play, the place was wrong. The French people start to stamp down the place. See. We want cock, they didn't want their song to play. See. They said, We want cock scene, we want cock scene, yeah. we want rubber dub style. <laughs> so, the owner for the yeah. place have to run and come and call me and say, Switch on. Yeah. And we switch on and we play it till the next morning. Okay. We are alone. You understand? Yeah. So, we break the ice. We go to Alan, the same thing. Okay. I was the first time we go to Alan, mm -hmm. we go to a place called Central Decom. And we string up and was playing. And the dance get full. And we hear some some of the Dutch youth them was DJing while the song playing in their Dutch language. See. So I call them up and say, come here, hand them the microphone. Yeah. And say, DJ while we're playing reggae. And they start to DJ in the language See. and trust me, the whole place catch a fire my <laughs> region. The whole place catch a fire and the people them love to hear that there. Yeah. Man, DJing yeah. in their language and thing, you know. So it was an experience, you yeah, know. Yeah, man, that sounds and nice. Did, yeah, that sounds nice you know? away, man. So you see them early days there. I used to cut it up there. I used to get it up like that. Well, listen. First of all, we used to send money to Jamaica through the post, <laughs> and we sent to Randis a North Parade, okay. and we sent to Caribbean record orange street on Orange street okay right and then they would send back the record to mm -hmm. the post office to us that's what we used to do it okay but um when coxon when we saw run coxon for a couple of years now yeah i decided to go to jamaica to start cutting music for coxon so for the sound okay so i i fly off to jamaica and find most of the students and artists and start to cut a dub play for Cox and Sound. That's it. And I never stopped doing that because I realized that for you to stay in front of the other sound, then you have to go play music that the other sound they don't have to bring an interest to your sound. So I love going to Jamaica and cutting music. One of the first places that I cut music in Jamaica is Randy's, Randy's record company, 17 Art Parade. Wow. Randy's have a studio upstairs and a cutting machine. Yeah. All the burning spear tune, I cut them at Randy's. See. And Jimmy Landon and thing. Okay. Until we move on to King Tubby's yeah. at Waterhouse. Mm -hmm. I cut the most tune at King Tubby's. Leave King Tubby's and we come to Channel 1 Maxfield Avenue and cut the most tune. Okay. In the history of cutting music in Jamaica, there is no song in England or Europe that cut more record, more artist record in Jamaica more than I am and Lady Cox and Parser Cox and Water National Song in England. Right? And by doing that, we make a lot of people start taking the plane to go to Jamaica to cut music also. Okay. Because we were so far ahead. Definitely. 
with Jamaica music, you know. Yeah. We bust most of the artists there. Mm. Right? And I think that a select a job and a song is to bust artists. Yeah. That's our job, to yeah. play the artists mm -hmm. and to make them become big. Yeah, definitely. So, definitely. Sometimes you know what I mean? couldn't play on the radio. So no. Well, crazy. listen, mm -hmm. there was no radio. It was sound system in England that bust reggae music. True. Because there was no radio. That's BBC right. and all those radio, they wouldn't play reggae. Mm -hmm. Until we have Radio Caroline, Pirate Station, that mm -hmm. come in the Thames Estuary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear them play reggae, Tony Blackburn play reggae, and they say, reggae is rubbish. What? Every time you play one reggae, you hear all of them. What? We are Jamaican. We born and grow in Jamaica. We love Jamaica more than any part in the whole wide world. Right? We didn't listen to them. We continue to play our Jamaica music and our sound system until we get it big. Mm. We, the sound system, are the one who force BBC to get somebody and there to play reggae because people was ringing them and asking them why they didn't have a reggae program okay. on the radio. Yeah. So they go and they get a selector that used to play for Count Sucky in the Q Club named Steve Barnard. Yes, man. And man, give man. Steve Barnard one hour on BBC on a Thursday. Yeah. That is the first time we really start to play reggae. That time we, the sound system, bust reggae big time already. Definitely. Before they catch on. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know what I mean? It really is true. Yeah, but you know, reggae is my national music, you know. Yeah. Jamaica, Jamaica create three world beat, three world music beat. The first one is Cap, that become big household name yeah. in England, Europe, everywhere. The second music beat that Jamaica created was Rocksteady, that become massive hit into everybody household yeah. until we move on from Rocksteady and we come to reggae. Reggae is a multiracial beat that everyone loves. Definitely. Right? And the reggae get big. Mm -hmm. But it's we, the sound system, who make it big. In Jamaica, you have the greatest set of musicians that can play everyone else's music, but they had a country that could not play the reggae, yeah. like the Jamaican musician. Definitely. Now, mm -hmm. today, they start this computer thing and people is trying to make these music and computer when you have the greatest set of musicians in Jamaica I do. Jamaica should go back to make proper roots rock reggae right with, with, the, with the proper musician like Earl China Simit right great musician mm -hmm. Sly and Robbie, yeah, definitely. Flabber Holt, yeah. Hux Brown, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Light Parks, these musicians, yes. they are great. Yeah. Jamaica musicians, they can play every country music. Definitely. And most of the country couldn't play reggae like them. So they can play their own music and play everybody's <laughs> music. So, True. all of a sudden, this computer beat comes Yeah. This computer beat. Yes, some of the tune and from computer is okay. But there's no melody. From where we are coming from with Jamaica reggae music, proper roots rap reggae that play by the Jamaica musician. Mm -hmm. it, it's a different thing now. Yeah. The music don't have any melody yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And some of the great artists them and singers of Jamaica singing on computer reading and it's rubbish what i'm finding is personally um when we look into this it's like they're just making beats there's no great production of sound it's just a beat without any melody yeah that you listen when when jamaica musician go to the the studio and lay down a session sly and rabbi light parts and them the melody mm -hmm that you get from those rhythm that is laid from live instrument. Yeah. It is diff completely different from today. The computer is an easy thing. You can go in and just book, book and make something and come, you know? Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying, one of the problems that I find 
with Jamaica music today is that you have 10,000 new lyrics, but it's coming on the same old rhythm. When someone have a song, they go and look for one of the whole rhythm that already recorded by 10, 15 people yeah. and make the song on it. Mm -hmm. They're not coming up with original rhythm sure. for the original song. Yeah. I'm saying to Jamaica, the people of Europe, they come to Jamaica and they learn about our reggae business. And right now, most of the tune that is coming out of Europe, it is live music, it is live yeah, recording. Definitely. By proper German bass, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And proper everything. Yeah. And it is, I am getting a lot of tune that is coming from Europe right now. And original song and original rhythm. Definitely. They are doing the thing that Jamaica was good at. Definitely. Jamaica kind of doing computer rhythm now and leave the great musician them sitting down not doing anything. Mm. It's a joke. Now the music is quite influenced by like by the, the American hip hop kind of sound, you find it kind of tinny, like it, it, it's not, you can't differentiate between yeah, but to the show hip hop and, yeah. and But to and show you that some of the people in Jamaica, they are not thinking. Mm -hmm. Because America, Canada, Europe, everybody was following Jamaica. Yeah. If you look, everybody is diving into Jamaica. The Beatles going to Jamaica, Rolling Stone going to Jamaica, Jay Z going to Jamaica. Every, why are everybody. they going to Jamaica? Snoop Dogg, everybody. Is there some honey down there that they are going to suffer? They are going there because of the, the rhythm that the Jamaica yeah. musicians they are making, yeah. and they want that. They were following us. So these new artists that arrive in Jamaica now. They leave the proper roots music to go and follow those little things that them do, hip hop thing that them doing in America and thing. No, yeah. you're wrong. You're wrong. Because we are the creator of reggae. As I said, Jamaica create three world beat. Definitely. Rock, ska, rock steady and reggae. Mm -hmm. And it's three international beat that is in people's household all over Europe and the world. Yeah. So we don't have any right to follow other people yeah. to go and do their little thing that they are doing because we already have great rhythm and music that we're putting out. Yeah. So what I'm saying now, Europe at the moment here, 2019, Europe is making better reggae rhythm more than what is coming out of Jamaica. You still have some good rhythm coming out of Jamaica, right? Mm -hmm. But not enough like what's coming from Europe. If you, when I get some song from Europe now, I get a new song, an original rhythm. It is really refreshing. Okay. Because to the last 10 years, all we're getting from Jamaica is new song, but they go back and find one of the old rhythm that was already recorded to make the new song on yeah. and it become monopolous. Mm -hmm. It become like a hideous thing, you know? See. You understand? See. No creativity. No, no creativity. Yeah. Now we have some some young DJ coming up in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. We're giving reggae a bad name. The type of lyrics that they're putting on the reggae rhythm, those things don't work anymore. Right? Those things about and the woman frock and this and some devious language mm -hmm. that they put in on the reggae rhythm, some of these young DJ that is coming up. I'm telling you, in Jamaica, you DJ, you got to change that. That's not working anymore. You know what is working in Europe now and the world? Proper roots and culture and music that yeah. stand for something. If your music don't stand for nothing, it's not going anywhere. Right? Your music has to be educational. Right? All this slackness and this type of tune that you're putting on the reggae rhythm, you've got to stop it. And what I'm saying, the shooter of them in Jamaica, they should censor the type of music that people come into their studio to make. And when a man comes to the studio with slackness, they should run him out and say, we are not going to put that down and take. Right? Because Jamaica 
need to need to bring back the standard to what it was yeah. in the reggae yeah. industry, yeah. right? Because you Jamaica create the reggae. Yeah. So we can have other people doing it better than us. But you know, a lot of them they call you there in Jamaica, they got their little home studio and a little portable studios, you understand? Mm -hmm. So they don't really have the elders to listen to. I think there's a there's a generation gap where they're not really learning from the great musicians of the past. Yeah. So their team come in like with no guidance. You know, discipline is the guidance of life. You understand? Without that discipline which you get from your elders, yeah. they're free to run around and chat and say anything. And, well, and the trouble, mm -hmm. places that people live in Jamaica, some people call it ghetto. Yeah. I don't call places in Jamaica that people live ghetto. I call it community. Mm -hmm. So if you think that you're living in a ghetto, you're going to come out and behave like a ghetto heights. Yeah. I think. But if you think that you're living in a community, you'll try and live yes. away so that you're all right within the community and you're, you're, you're gaining your respect and thing. Yeah. So we need to stop talking about this ghettoology thing and talk about community, yeah, right? Definitely. And some of the great reggae artists and producers, right, and musicians, they need to tell these youngsters that we are not going to make this type of reading for you, but to, for you to go and put this kind of derogatory language yeah, yeah. on. Because it's not working. All it do, it show Jamaica in a bad light. Yeah. So we want this thing to stop. I don't know how it is going to stop, but I would appeal to all the people that is making these foolish lyrics, right? These slapness lyrics to stop. Because it's not going anywhere. It's a waste of time, right? But, you know, like I said, like you're saying, you know, that, that, that them young boy, it's a generational team, you understand? They see life differently with the influences of the world. You understand the influence of the world is, is like to you know, to what you grew up, Coxon, I know Coxon sound, as a big man sound, a serious sound growing up. You understand? And there was a discipline around Coxon that if you got Coxon, you have to behave yourself and, 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 and flex in a certain way. But they, you, they don't have that guidance. So, what we're saying is, to tune into them interview and listen to yeah. Sir Lloyd tell you straight. Pastor, yeah, well, all we can do, missing. all we can do is to ask the younger youth them in Jamaica yeah, who is making these the basic <coughs> rhythm to stop and do it. Try and find a different way. Yeah, and and write good songs and you know write good DJ song. Mm -hmm. Right, look at you have you that you right Al Capone, right I right bigger dear Jerry. Yeah, right. All these great Jack Thomas, yes, man. Josie Wills, mm, all these great DJs, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Out of Jamaica. General And you tell this General Trees, that they yeah. listen to all of these DJs, they, they are conscious mm -hmm. lyrics that they are speaking. Yeah. So the youth them should adopt some of these, all these great DJs, you right. know? And try and turn around the thing for the better. Because what I can see at the moment, I can see Europe. Europe gone in front of Jamaica where reggae is concerned. Yeah. You know? And we have some great artists in Jamaica. We have Chronics. Yeah. We have Morgan Heritage. We have Luciana. Wow. We have Barry Salmon. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We have so much great artists Could that is still up. that is still making yeah. good music in Jamaica. Taurus Riley and Taurus Riley. Yeah. 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 You know, you know? Yeah. there are so much artists to call, no yeah. disrespect. To some of the artists that I don't call their name, mm -hmm. but true, this is a quick fire interview. <laughs> I, I can't call everyone yeah, name, but yeah. my respect is for all the great artists in Jamaica and musicians. Yeah. So we need to get back our Jamaica musician them building the rhythm in Jamaica yes. and make a turnaround yes. because Europe is making a lot of reggae rhythm yeah. with with live musician, and we need to do that, you know, yeah. because we are the creator. Of the reggae music. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Let me just go back into the sound system vibes, yeah. Yeah. Um, is there any sound that you like to clash in, like in twenty nineteen? Well, at this time of my life, I would want to clash with any sound. What I would like to do, I would like to string up and play with some of the original sound. Mm -hmm. You know, to have a nice night out, right? Sound like Josh Shaka. Right? Saxon, Fatman, mm -hmm. you know? Jayute, Jack Tobbies, King Tobbies, any one of these songs. 
Yeah. Right? I would like to string up with and play because right now some of the sound them have different managers, right? Yeah. And the managers them don't want the sound them to play with any other sound. So right away they kill the whole of the thing. Right? They kill a big part of the entertainment that yeah. people like. Yeah. But when when original sound like Coxman, Fatman, Jayo, Kington, when we meet three of us or four of us in them where we pull more we pull more crowd man even artists. Yeah. That people come out, they have a nice night and mm -hmm. thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's where I am, you know. I, I don't mind stream up with any of this song. Even if we do it for charity. Yeah. It would be nice. Yeah, that would be nice. Very three, three of the original song are four string up yeah. and do a dance for charity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because we have a lot of places where we really need charity. And it would be nice mm -hmm. if we could do that, you know? Yeah, come together like yeah. that. But like that's what that's what the platform of dancing clear is. Is to is to bring together the sound vibes and give you a little sneak preview. You know, we do a little sound clash of forty minutes, one hour, you know what I mean? And that's a little taste of what is to come, you know what I mean? So that's 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 a beautiful thing that you're saying, you know, we're bringing the sound together, whether it's gonna be for a charity or whether it's gonna be like just a serious dance. Yeah man, big up dancing clear and YouTube to doing this marvelous work. Mm. Because what you're doing, you're keeping sound system thing alive, you know. Definitely. And remember, sound system is the thing that boss all the reggae artists, you know, from mm. Jamaica. Remember, we were here before any radio station. That's right. When the radio station started to play reggae, that time we already made reggae mm. big. So people like like BBC and all these radio stations, they didn't play reggae. Mm. I hear. Tony Blackburn playing on Capit um, Radio Caroline in the Thames Estuary. And he said, reggae is rubbish. He said, every time you hear one reggae, you hear all of them. No, we didn't listen to him. Very because we were born and going to Jamaica, and reggae music is our national music. So no one in this whole world could stop we mm -hmm. from loving our Jamaica music. Yeah. So we, we, we forward on. Yeah. Up until today, and we get reggae so big that everybody is involved in it now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's an international team. It is, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Okay, brother, so on that note, people, you've heard it from the great man himself, the great man himself, Sir Lydie Coxon. Yeah? So, listen, I just want to say, Bless you, love, and thank you very much. Man, bless you, love, but I still want to say something more before this thing. <laughs> right? Yes, man. What I would like to say to the people of Jamaica. Yes. All the artists, all the musicians in Jamaica, right? All the producers, all the studio owners in Jamaica. You got to get together and call a big reggae conference where we speak about where the reggae is going in, mm -hmm. at, in Jamaica at the moment. Because uh -huh. as far as yes. I see, yes. I see Europe yes. is taking away the reggae business from Jamaica. And Jamaica, I remember, as you create this reggae, you can't afford for your next country to take it away. Mm -hmm. What Europe is doing, they are going in the studio with live musicians and laying good rhythm. Yeah. Right? I'm getting a lot of tune that I'm buying from Europe. And what happened? You are getting good good rhythm with original lyrics and it is refreshing. Yeah. So come on Jamaica. You'll have to stand up now and try and train, turn around this thing, you know. I know we've got some good artists in Jamaica still who's making good music, yeah. like Bojo Bantan, mm -hmm. Barry Salmon. Taros Riley, yeah. you, Luciana, yeah. you know, Queen Africa, Queen Africa yeah. um, Chronix, yes. you know, yeah. they're still managing to do good rhythm and sing on the good rhythm. Yeah. But all these little DJ who coming out with these little slap rhythm and these slap thing and reggae rhythm, it's not working anymore. You're just wasting your time and giving Jamaica a bad look in the rest of the world to think that it's only those kind of dirty lyrics we can make mm -hmm. when we have people in Jamaica who can write good songs and things so mm -hmm. come on Jamaica Fair have enough. that conference with everybody and try to change your own thing because you 
you create three music beat, yeah. ska, rock steady, and reggae. So please, please call this music conference and get things going. Yes. Big up my friend Mandingo every time because you stand for reggae music and everything that is culture. Uh, I use my bridging. So Rastafari guidance and uh, love. I right. just want to say one last thing. What do you have to say about the works and the contribution that Don Sinclair is doing for? No, Don Sinclair is Original doing a good contribution to these things. Mm -hmm. Because I see a lot of people come to me for interview and things. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the time to do it. But whenever Don Sinclair calls me to do an interview, unless something up man I couldn't make it. Yeah. Right? That's the only way. Yeah. But I like what Dan Clear is doing. Mm -hmm. He's keeping the sound system alive Definitely. and the sound system history. So big up yourself Dan Clear. I'm on Lady Cox instead of keep on doing the good work. <laughs> so there you have it people, we're gonna end on that note. The great Sir Lady Coxon. You heard it from one of the greatest, one of the greatest contributions to reggae music and sound system. You never forget that. Never, never forget that. So big up yourself, Dan Sinclair. Big up yourself, I'm really cool. And all my YouTubers, I'll be your host today, Shawnee T. And I just want to say until the very next time, we are boom. <laughs>